In 2008, the Plant City Photo Archives awarded the Heritage Award to Dr. Hal Brewer. The Heritage Award criterion are threefold. One, someone who's had a long-standing impact in the community. Two, someone who's been a champion of and supporter of heritage and restoration efforts. And three, someone who is generally beloved. Dr. Brewer certainly all three of these many times over. But also in light of his character and his personality, it was decided to have a little fun with Dr. Brewer's presentation. A halfway roast was accomplished with the help of many of his friends and many people continue to feel that that soiree's presentation was the best we've ever had. This is reproduction of the video presentation narrated by Dan Rollerson, the narrator of the original presentation. Enjoy, and may Dr. Brewer rest in peace. D.E. Bailey, Jim Redman, Robert Trinkle, Max Smith, and Betty Barker Watkins. And now joining them, Dr. Harold David Brewer, or Dr. Howe. It is fitting that Dr. Brewer receive our Heritage Award. As we read Howe's bio, we notice that he has had a very interesting and historic life, not unlike Forrest Gump. He has crossed paths with greatness and brushed with destiny. Harold David Brewer was born in Hattiesburg, Mississippi on May 19, 1857. A young man in the South at the outbreak of the Civil War, Howe was captured by the Yankees and pressed into service as a massage therapist for occupying Union officers. After the war, he bounced around to different jobs, finally landing a gig with an inventor from Menlo Park, New Jersey. Answering the call of his country in the summer of 1917, Howe shipped out with General Pershing and to this day blames all of his stumbling around on trench foot. Returning to Mississippi, he spent the next several years working in a drugstore in his hometown of Richton. He was sure he wanted to become a pharmacist, but before he could get into pharmacy school, another war broke out and Hal was off to the Navy where he served as a pharmacist in the Pacific Theater. And without all that aspirin Hal doled out, who knows if we'd ever return to the Philippines. After the Navy, the future Dr. Brewer found himself once again in Mississippi this time the guest of a well-known state institution. It's not what you're thinking. This is Howe's actual student identity card at Ole Miss. It was there that he received his BS in pharmacy and his BA in biology. While in pharmacy school, Howe met and married a woman many decades his junior, Miss Lynn Holloway of Memphis, Tennessee. The root of that tree so far mightily grown to be four children, five grandchildren, and one great-grandchild. After pharmacy school, Hal contemplated a career as a druggist, but something kept urging him to become a physician. With his spotty academic record, he searched for years to find a medical school that would accept him, and finally, in 1952, he learned that he'd been admitted to a doctor training facility in the Belgian Congo. After medical school, the new Dr. Brewer brought his young and growing family to Florida in 1958, where he began an internship at Tampa General Hospital. While there, he got to know Dr. Bill Merriweather, who told him about a little town nearby called Plant City. Plant City needed young doctors, and they weren't too choosy about who they got. Hal said it sounded like a good fit, and so opened his own medical practice in 1960 in Plant City. Money was tight in those early days, so Dr. Brewer had to economize on office space, equipment, and staff. In fact, it got so bad that whenever someone actually survived a Hal Brewer treatment, they received a trophy and flowers. The various decades saw the growth and change of Hal Brewer. In the 1960s, he was introduced to self-actualization and experimentation. In the 1970s, he joined a traveling minstrel group where he was featured harmonica player, you know, weddings and bar mitzvahs. In the 1980s, when the entire country was wondering who shot J.R. Ewing, we had our own candidate. In the mid-1980s, Howe was elected president of the Plant City Chamber of Commerce and was named to six other leadership posts during that time. He immediately declared martial law and named himself president for life. 
Everyone knows that Hal Brewer was always willing to go into the tank for civic causes. Well, on this particular day, he had something else in mind. His involvement in Plant City Entertainment made him always seek a role in show business. Today, we had him convinced that he actually had a shot at being named the Gorton's Fisherman. The 1990s saw Hal Brewer fall in with the wrong crowd as he became involved with a shady underworld group known only as the Plant Avenue Gang. With Reese Morgan and Bobby Miles, you can see that Plant City hadn't become any more choosy about its doctors. With the dawn of the new millennium, Doc Brewer now advancing in years and his motor skills deteriorating, it was no secret that he had trouble safely negotiating local parking lots, whether it was trying to parallel park in front of the Plant City Photo Archives or driving across the front lawn of the 1914 school building. It seems that backing into objects and other vehicles was a weekly occurrence for the last several years. Yes, Hal Brewer, like Forrest Gump, has brushed Destiny and sent Destiny to the hospital or body shop most of the time. Hal, you've been this community's doctor, done everything on behalf of South Florida Baptist Hospital, served as director of the Spring, East Hillsboro Historical Society, Plant City Food Bank, Chairman of the Board of Stewards for the Florida United Methodist Church, President and Hickson Fellow of the Kiwanis Club, Toastmasters, and Plant City Chamber of Commerce. You've been Citizen of the Year and your family, Family of the Year in 1970. In other words, you've done it.